All right. Well, let's let's roll in here. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. And we're starting a master's class today. We're uh, we're going to uh, the goal for the next class. We're going to focus on one methodology uh, and really try to teach the nicks and crannies, uh, all the nuances to help you really become a master craftsman. That's that's the goal here. Um, and uh, while we get started, we want to welcome everybody. Here's what we do. We, we, we want a little help from you today. I'm going to put Johnny's going to take over for just a second. And as I'm thinking of the first master's class, we're thinking either a specific butterfly methodology or calendar. If you had a choice to learn one of the four methodologies, short-term butterfly, 7 to 15 day duration, Long, a longer term butterfly methodology, 30 to 60 days, a short term calendar, 7 to 15 days, or a longer term calendar, 30 to 60. So I want to see where your thoughts uh, come in. Uh, we have numerous methodologies at the different levels. And so I just wanted to get, as I'm kind of determining where I want to go with the first class, I want to just see what you guys um, have thought of. We got a winner? I, th I think we do. <laughs> I think we got a pretty clear winner. That's our short-term butterfly. 33% of you were interested in the 7 to 15 day short-term butterfly. The short-term calendar was 24%. And then long-term butterfly, 13, long-term calendar, 8. All right. Well, thank you, Johnny. So, folks, in the meantime, you know, with, uh, and, and we'll get into, we'll talk about a little bit about calendars today and butterflies. And, um, if you look at where the VIX is right now in the 12s, what strategy, what strategy might you take? What strategy might you take with the VIX uh, into the 12s today? Uh, the answer would be probably some type of a calendar, right? All right. Well, folks, welcome to today. And... Uh, I had been thinking for a while about a master's class. Usually when we do a butterfly or a calendar or whatever the strategy is, we'll talk about different methodologies. And I, and I thought about over the last couple of weeks, I said it'd be nice to do a master's class where we just take one meth methodology and kind of torture it for three weeks. You know, we stick with one thing, like maybe a 15-day butterfly. That's something I do on Thursdays. And so, um, so that, that's kind of the thinking because ultimately to get consistent and to bring in X amount of dollars a month on a strategy, you have to move in that direction of a master craftsman. So let's move on here. This is for educational purposes today. Thanks everybody for showing. I'm tickling here because this is the first time I saw uh, my nephew, Jen, who put together or at least cleaned up the PowerPoint for me. Uh, I'm tickled over his kung fu kung fu guy there. So I'm I'm, I'm getting tickled right now as I as I was the master master Po from David Carradine. So class outline: this first master's series class will be starting March 26th, which is a Tuesday, a week from this Tuesday. We'll go Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Central. Uh, one hour minimum class time. So we'll go three weeks. Uh, the cost uh, is two, $297. All classes recorded and archived. So whether you can watch one of the six classes or two of them, everything else will be recorded. And uh, as with any classes that we do, you can ask questions anytime, two weeks after the class, the day after the class, and uh, the questions will come to me. So we're looking forward to that. I will decide, thank you for doing the poll, I'll kind of decide uh, between the butterfly and the calendar. I think with the voting, uh, talking about the short-term butterfly, um, I will either pick a short-term butterfly, that would be the first pick, or the short-term uh, calendar. And we'll probably, probably by early next week, I'll send out, as we're promoting the class, we'll send out an email and you'll know which one we're going to do. But today, uh, we'll talk about both. 
Okay, we'll talk about a few different things and we'll talk about the market. I did this slide yesterday, SPX 2810. Let's go, how about let's go right into Thinker. Uh, are a lot of you familiar with Thinkorswim? I just thought I've got the PowerPoint, but we can go right into the Thinkorswim uh, software. Most of you are pretty familiar with the Thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade platform. And I'll, I'll kind of go back and forth, folks. All right, well, let's take a look at the market today. So right now, as we speak, SPX is at 28.22, up 13. And, <clears throat> and as you can see, we, it looks like we kind of, at least temporarily, uh, have got through that, looked like there was some resistance here for a while at this 28.22. 13, 28, 15 area, and we got a little bit through it today. We got up to 28, 30, and now we're just backing off a little bit. Maybe we'll work our way down towards the lows, but we're, um, suffice to say, we're not blowing through these numbers on the upside, right? There seems to be some, you know, some resistance as we're going higher. Uh, another thing, so, so we're up here, uh, but, um, so we're up about a half a percent for the day at 28.22. As I look at this ATR, Wilders, um, what is that? That is just basically a measurement of the size of these candles on the price chart. That's what it is. So in other words, as you look at when we were correcting in the market in December, and the market was dropping like a rock. You see these big candles, and that means you get a big distance uh, between the high and the low. That's what the ATR is. Average true range takes the difference between the high and the low. And so as your candles get bigger, what you can see is the market was dropping here in September, what did the ATR go? It went up. As the market was stabilizing here, in November, it started coming down. And then as the market started, you know, this was down 10% starting in September. And then the second 10%, what did that do? It moved the ATR up. So all it's saying is the bigger the range uh, when you have these, these big candle days, and it could be an up day, which would be a white candle or a down day, it could be a red. And what it's saying is, the wider the range is in a given day, should it be A, easier, or B, tougher to manage short-term trades? It's gonna to be tougher. So we watch these ATR numbers, and, and uh, Jay Bailey, who uh, has been a mentor with me along with Mark Fetton for many years, but Jay has come up with, usually when the ATR is less than 25, we will, we will be in and excited about short-term trades, seven to 15 day butterflies, iron condors, calendars. Uh, if the ATR goes over 25, we're kind of equating that, to, uh, hey, we got 12, 14 inches of snow in Chicago. Maybe I, sh maybe I shouldn't take out the, like my son's got a Kia Optima. Maybe I shouldn't take the Kia Optima out with, uh, that's, that doesn't really have any rear wheel drive or anything, because it's gonna slide around. So we define an area for short term trades generally when the ATR is less than 25 and the VIX uh, is under 18. And right now the VIX is at 1293. So uh, even though we, we went up today, in terms of doing seven to 15 day short term trades, we're, we're fine with that, right? Um, the weather conditions are okay. Uh, the candles aren't moving real fast or, or we're not having big ranges. Uh, generally, the candles are a little uh, smaller uh, as you see here. Uh, and that's what the ATR is telling us. VIX, is is lower than 18 so we're, we're fine playing it doesn't mean that there's not some movement but this is relatively calm 
All right, any questions on that or as far as we're going to start a little bit of discussion today on short-term trades, but any, any comments or questions on uh, weather conditions that we would play these short-term trades? Um, and generally what we do when the VIX goes over 18 or ATR goes over 25, we're definitely, we're going to be more cautious on our income trades kind of non-directional trades, and we're going to kind of move further out in duration uh, so we have less price risk. Because the bottom line is with shorter-term trades, you have more price risk. Uh, Ralph says, so use those guidelines for selling premium or buying it. Selling premium, Ralph. Selling premium. VIX under 18. Um, ATR under 25 for selling premium. So really all we're doing is saying, you know, let's face it. Do any of you know where the market's going on a week-to-week -week basis? Does, does any of you know where the market's going every week? Yes or no? Just so you know, anybody who says yes isn't being honest. Um, nobody knows, right, on a week-to-week. -week. Maybe there's one person. I don't know who that person is, though. Um, but the point is, we're just setting driving conditions where we would play these income trades or range-bound trades like iron condors, calendars, butterflies that are dependent on um, probabilities or time decay. Um, now, speculative trades, you can make a point if the VIX goes over 18 and ATR goes over 25, hey, you're getting a lot of movement, right? So, so swing trading, speculative type trading uh, would probably make uh, some sense. All right, let's look at a couple trades. I don't normally put short-term trades on on Friday. Anybody would could think why? 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 If I'm going to put short-term or short-term trades on, why? Why would I not do a seven to fifteen day trade? Again. For this discussion, folks, if you just came in, we're talking about income trades, not directional spec trades today. Why would I not put seven to 15 day butterflies, calendars, iron condors on on a Friday, but I wouldn't have a huge problem putting on a 45, 50 day trade. So let's get to the first question. The reason I don't like to put on uh, especially a same expiration trade as a butterfly or something like that, or even a uh, calendar, is, is what happens is, what do you think the market makers do when all of you, how many of you guys like to sell options going into the weekend, right? How many of you like to sell options going into the weekend? Many people do. But here's the point, folks. The market makers are aware, believe it or not, the market makers are aware there's a weekend coming up too. I know you don't have a lot of confidence in the market makers, but um, <clears throat> since I was one of those for a long time, market makers are aware when weekends are. And so I was a specialist, uh, a DPM they called it, a specialist at the CBOE for many years. And so here's what I used to do, right? And this is being recorded. So what I used to do is starting maybe Thursday afternoon when all of you guys would come in, either in the form of a credit spread or a butterfly or an iron condor or a short straddle or anything to sell some time premium. And you could do that with a spread or individually let me ask you a question. Do you think I knew that people were going to come in? Do you think I knew there would be a, a, a demand of people wanting to sell options? All right. So, so let me give you an idea of what I did starting on Thursdays. When I would see sellers coming in, I'd take my fat fingers, and we have a computer in the pit. And what I would do is start lowering the volatility of the near-term options. Right? Just gradually, just keep a little bit, you know, 10 cents here, a little bit here, a little bit. 
as the supply is coming in. And so what I'm doing is you're feeling good about life and yourself because you're selling the option, but I'm feeling good because the options I'm buying are basically close to Monday's prices. I'm lowering them. And then what would happen on Monday is all the volatility I lowered, I just raise it back up. So if you ever watch the volatilities like now, maybe write down the, you know, take a vehicle that you look at, like maybe SPX. Look at the near term, maybe eight days out or something, at the money calls or some strikes. Write down the implied volatility, and what you'll find Monday morning a lot of time, it's higher, regardless of what the market does. Why? As a way of discounting the prices because of sellers coming Thursday and Friday, market makers will lower the volatility, and then once Monday comes and the demand is done, raise it right back up. Anyways, so for those of you who thought you were pulling a quickie on the market makers, maybe not. All right, so let's, let's take a look, even though I wouldn't normally initiate uh, trades, let's look at a, I'll go back to my slides for a second. This was a 15-day butterfly I was looking at at the end of the day yesterday, right? So let's start out with a butterfly. All right, so here's an example of a butterfly. How many people have never done a butterfly? Okay, so let me just spend a quick second here. What's the, why would you sell a butterfly? So the whole gist of these trades is, so let's start with this. So when you're looking, here I'm doing an all call butterfly. You can do an all put butterfly or you can do an iron butterfly. They're all the same thing. Right? I'm choosing an all-call butterfly, but the gist of it is this. If you're selling options because you want to benefit from time decay, if that's your goal, which is our goal for income, which options have the most time premium or extrinsic value? In the money, at the money, or out of the money? A, in the money, B, at the money, C, out of the money? Which options have the most time premium or extrinsic value? A, in the money, B, at the money, C, out of the money. So your at the money has your most time premium. So the goal with any butterfly, so if you look at the P&L, so how many of you notice that according to this graph, and you can see this is the zero P&L line, and this is all your profit, and this is your loss. But how many notice that this is the underline when I took this example last night, okay? So this is the underline, and so they're saying this line here is 28.10. This is where it was last night towards the close. And so can, you, can everybody see that this graph is saying at expiration, which is in 15 days on this trade as of yesterday, March 29 expiration, you can make a boatload of money, right? A boatload, maybe a boat and a half load full of uh, money if it kind of doesn't move much, if it stays around 28.10. Can everybody see that on the graph? This is the expiration graph in 15 days. This was a March 29 expiration that I looked at yesterday. How many can see that you make a boatload and a half if it sits there. Why is that? The primary objective for butterfly trading, especially short-term trading at the money is sell the options. I just, this is something I did yesterday. Sell the options that are at the money with the most time premium. And then as hedges, buy, you could see in this case, I'm buying options 30 points down and 30 points up, right? So I'm buying options with less time premium or extrinsic value. So if, if the stock, if it kind of sits there, whatever I sell the 2810s for, if we close the 2810 in 15 days, those are going to go to zero. So if I sold them at six, seven, eight, ten, 10, whatever, those will go to zero, whereas these options will still, uh, they're going to be trading less or nothing. This one's in the money. 
Um, but the point is, this had more time premium, right? So you're gonna, this particular trade is a debit. This thing will grow to eight or nine dollars as we don't move too far away from the center. So does everybody kind of get how these things work, right? How the butterfly makes money. Anybody confused on that? How a butterfly makes money? You're basically selling the one with the most time premium, buying some options. In, in the case of a call butterfly, both sides. And the goal is you get this thing called positive theta. Your short options are going to decay quicker than your longs, and it's how you kind of make money. So this was a 615 debit for this trade times three contracts, $1,845. Uh, the theta on this was 55 bucks. So if I was trying to make, let's say my goal was to make, you know, 7% on, for the debit, right? Now I'm doing it three times. So seven times 1,800, the total cost here would be about 129, 130 bucks. So I'm looking to make 130 bucks on my 1,845 dollar uh, purchase. Now, if I just did one and I, I paid $6.15, it'd be something like I pay $6.15 and when this gets up to uh, $6.60, bought it at $6.15, sold it at $6.60, that would be about $45 for each one. 45 divided by $18.45 would be about 7%. So, Anyways, this is called a balanced butterfly, right? And normally, when I'm doing these short-term butterflies, we'll start with balance, but we want to keep our deltas under control. And normally, we want to keep our deltas to zero. So what happens more than that, Rick says, for me, if I do at the money flies, I like put flies because it takes advantage of the IV skew he says he's taking advantage of the IV skew. There's an IV skew in the calls. There's one in the puts. The bottom line is, do I think that doing the, how many think doing the put flies are better than the calls? How many people think doing the put flies are better doing the calls? Yeah, I don't think it matters. I mean, there is, the markets are so tight and so, there's no edge there. There's generally there's no edge. Yeah, I think as Dino says, six of one, half dozen of the other. Anyways, so, but what happens more than not because of the, now because of the volatility skew that Rick's talking about, um, a lot of times you'll end up doing broken wing butterflies. So a balanced butterfly is when the distance between the short call and the long call here it's thirty and the distance between the short call and the upper strike long call is 30, that's a balanced butterfly. A broken wing butterfly is going to be more expensive because you're breaking one of the wings, but you can see here the distance on the downside is 30, the distance on the upside is 25. Well, why do I do that? I only do that because I want to get the position deltas closer to zero. That's it. Robert says, is the distance to the wings based on the ATR? No, usually I look, the distance to the wings, I'll try to, it will talk, you know, as we get into the master's class, we'll, we'll get into this hot and heavy as far as what delta we like for the long call, which delta is better to buy in a low vol environment, which is better to buy in a high. I mean, the great thing, like, what these strategies are, we're looking to put the same strategy on every week. But like anything in life, this is pretty simple, putting it, but the nuances and the little finer points are really the key to these trades. When to go wider on a butterfly, when to go narrower, how to make your width, um, and all that type of thing. But you're, you're generally gonna be a narrower butterfly when you're shorter term uh, than oh, when you're farther term, um, you're gonna be wider because there's more time to go. So this would be a broken wing butterfly. 
What do you think is more expensive? A, a balanced butterfly, or B, a broken wing at the money butterfly? What do you think is more expensive? A, balanced butterfly, B, broken wing. Yeah, broken wings are gonna be more, are gonna be more expensive. Definitely gonna be more expensive. And this is all calls. But again, these short-term trades, why do we do it? Theta. You know, the name of the game is theta. Price risk is, is really your biggest risk on short-term trades. Volatility is a distant second in terms of uh, foes or enemies. And uh, theta is the name of the game. And, and, and generally, we're trying to get out of these in a short period of time. We're not looking to stay in the entire time. There'd be no edge. So these are butterflies, and you guys have voted uh, butterflies. I'm leaning towards uh, the first master's class being a 15-day butterfly. I think the only way I might change it is if we just, the market continued up and volatilities in the VIX were like 11 or 12, and they were really low. Uh, boy, it would be tough not to, not to do calendars. So the plan would be to go ahead and do a, 15-day butterfly. Uh, I've been doing it for a couple of years. We've been doing it in our trading group for a long time, um, usually putting it on Thursdays. But And, and um, we'll talk about that in the nuances, and that'll probably be the one we'll go over, unless volatilities just stay really low here. And we might be forced to do calendars. So that's a little bit on the butterfly uh, family. And we talked about the broken wing. Now let's move over to the calendar. Calendar might be a little easier for uh, beginners and stuff just because there's only two legs. So in this particular example, a 15-day calendar from yesterday, um, I sold an option that was 15 days out and I bought an option that was 29 days out. And again, how do you make money? How many people have never done a calendar? Yes or no? How many people have never bought a calendar trade? Okay, again, the, the same principle of how a butterfly makes money, they're basically a similar graph. So what happens is you sell the at-the-money option. So in this case, doing this yesterday, uh, we sold like the at-the-money 2810 put in the March 29 expiration, 15 days away. And then we bought the April 12, 2810 put. So how do you make your money? How would there be good profit at expiration at 2810? How could you make some really good money? Here's the answer. Because again, you're selling a 15-day option. You're buying a 29-day option. So the 15-day option is going to decay a lot more. Matter of fact, if we close at 2810, the short strike, Whatever we sold the 2810 put for, let's say eight bucks or seven, it'll go to zero. And the April 12, even though it's still at the money, will still hold value because there's two weeks left. So this spread, this is a debit transaction, just like the call butterfly, the spread will expand. That debit will go higher as we get closer to expiration. So in this example, I'm buying the 2810 put selling the 2810 put, and my, my delta's close to zero, one delta long, 1.17, positive theta of 20, vega of 28. What does the theta of 20 mean? It just means that today, theoretically, if nothing much happens, I'm gonna bring in about $20 of positive decay uh, that this option will decay quicker than this option, even though the April is going to be more expensive. This Vega, which is a theoretical number, says if the vol implied volatility of your long option goes up a point and your short option goes up a point, you'll make $88 theoretically. Now, options don't always move in concert like that. Uh, but the reason you make it is, again, here you're buying more time premium than you're selling. So if the implied volatility goes up a point on each option, um, you'll make some, you'll make 
theoretically that amount because you have more time premium in the April 12s and that's what you bought. So you'll make more on the April 12s than you'll lose in the March 29s. Conversely, if the volatility, like today, the volatility dropped, so if the volatility drops a point for each of your long and short, you're going to lose $88. Why? Because you bought the one with more time premium, you sold the one with less time premium. So as the volatility goes down, you're caught holding the bag. You're long the one with more time premium. So that's a 15-day SPX calendar. And this would be an eight-day. And the big difference, if you go from a 15-day uh, a cost $9 and the theta is 20, the eight-day costs more, but your theta goes up. As you go closer to expiration, your theta goes up, but your price risk goes up also. And so here, this is an $11.60 $11 debit, buying the April 5, 2810, selling the March 22, 2810. My long is 14 days further out than my short. In this case, if you say $11 is a lot, paying $1,100. Here's a cheaper calendar. I'm selling my uh, short eight days out. My long is just a week past it and that's gonna significantly reduce uh, the debit. And so the, the key to success on all these short-term trades is positive theta and, and managing your risk. John says the calendars look more expensive than the butterflies. And generally that could be the case because you're doing a mixed month spread, they could be. Um, uh, one isn't necessarily better than the other, but generally calendars will cost more. Fred says, uh, Dan, are you doing either the 15-day butterfly or the 15-day calendar every week, but not both? Generally, I've done the 15-day butterfly almost every week uh, for the last couple of years. A uh, calendar a lot, but what has been a problem with doing the calendar every week over the last four or five months? What has been a problem doing the calendar every week over the last four or five months? The volatility is too high. Generally, when the VIX gets too high, we don't trade calendars. Even though you can make a case as the volatility goes up, you could buy calendars, which is correct, but your, your bigger fear is you don't want to get caught holding the bag as volatility goes down. So right now, where the volatilities are in the 12s, you can definitely do calendars, you can definitely do um, butterflies. I am more apt to do calendars and butterflies, give a little more leeway. In other words, I'll do calendars at a higher volatility if it's an eight or 15 day versus maybe if I'm doing a 30 by 60 day, right? So as the point is this, when you're doing short-term trades, because you're bringing in a lot of theta, if it's a short-term trade, I'm willing to give up a little bit. I, I may do calendar at a higher volatility on a short-term trade. Because I'm bringing in so much theta, it'll offset it. So again, short-term trades are a totally different trade than longer-term trades. Uh, what determines if I do eight-day versus 15-day trade? But when you, it's a good question. When you get that short-term, I mean, they both have quite, they, they both will have really good theta. I think if the market's pretty range bound, Fred, um, I'll even go closer. If I think we're kind of in a range, and I'll even go closer in eight day because I'm going to get more theta and I'll get out of the trade quicker. But, you know, it's, it, they're pretty close to each other. So, anyways, so folks, the master's class starts a week from Tuesday. Thank you for voting. And uh, we'll send out an email next, next week which, uh, which one we're going to do. Probably we'll go with the 15-day butterfly. Uh, second choice, like you guys voted, would be the short-term uh, calendar, at least for the first master's class, which will be a three-week intense 
we're really working on something that we don't all get an opportunity when we're teaching uh, a typical butterfly or calendar class. We're doing different ones, longer term, shorter term. Here we're going to focus on one methodology and really work on those nuances uh, that, that really are the key to making these trades successful. So thank you so much uh, for uh, coming in here today. Rick said he did a Google calendar uh, about a, a little bit ago. Um, so we'll, we'll see a week from this coming Tuesday. Please sign up and uh, we'll get you the, uh, the links out uh, next week for the class. Thanks, thanks a lot and have a wonderful weekend.